me, Mike Self and I. It's me, Mike Self and I. Me, Mike Self and I. It's me, Mike Self and I. Another depressing, exciting, isolated, self contained, quarantine episode of Me, Mike, Self, and I. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. You're listening to another messed up on the film because it doesn't matter because I'm quarantined. We're all quarantined. So. You might as well listen to something entertaining and funny. Oh my god, Mike messed up on his words. Doesn't matter. We're quarantined. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter. But you're listening to me, Mike, Self, and I, episode 98, ladies and gentlemen. It's episode 98, 98. Two more episodes to episode 100. What am I going to do for my 100th episode? Uh, I would like to go outside. That would be nice. I would like to be outside. But only time will tell. And I'm not going to cry. And I'm not going to complain. I'm sure you heard enough crying and complaining on Facebook or Instagram. Even Instagram looks sad now. But we're not going to cry and complain. Not. There's no way. There's no need to. Okay. We're going to get through this. You know, traffic stopped. We're going to get through this. I'm not going to let this coronavirus and hold us down because it's the Me, Mike, Self, and I podcast. It doesn't matter if it's tragic or not. I'm here to report to you. And what I'm reporting to you is fun. That is my job because I don't have a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it just got pulled from under me. I am out of a job as a stand-up comedian. I do no long. I no longer exist. Do you understand that stand-up comics no longer exist? We are obsolete. Oh, we can we can film online, and we can we can we can we can film online, and 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 and, and have people subscribe and live stream. It's not the same. It is not the same. And then when we start coming back, are they going to hire no-namers to come back? No, they're going to hire big-namers and just get the crowds going. So it's going to be a long line until I hit the stage again. It's going to be a very long line. And that's okay. Because the coronavirus has taken over. (laughs) Are you yelling into this microphone, Michael? The coronavirus is here. It's taking over. I am the coronavirus. I have taken over your fun. I have taken over your lives. I have taken over your Well, I'm here with the coronavirus right now. Hey, coronavirus, how you doing? Interesting, coronavirus. Uh, Well, I just want to let you know that you have wiped out fun out of America. Just want to let you know that there's no more sports. Uh, there's no more live shows. There's no more concerts. There's no more. There's no more comedy shows. How do you feel about that coronavirus? <laughs> Cover your mouth when you make fun of me. That's why. <laughs> All right, I'm done. That's what it is, folks. This is the new norm. Okay, but it's okay. Because before the coronavirus had the outbreak, I just got back from a road trip. I was in Oregon, okay? I was in Oregon. I had a wonderful time over there. 
I didn't realize me being gone for two weeks was going to change my life rapidly. I could not believe. But I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be upset. But when I did stand-up comedy was two weeks ago. I was in good old Oregon. I traveled far. I went to Salem, Oregon. And uh, to the people of Salem, Oregon, thank you so much for coming out. It was a lot of fun. I met some interesting people. Uh, I know I talked about this in the previous episode, but man, (laughs) meth is dangerous. Let's move on. Uh, Everett, Washington, wonderful, great people of Everett, Washington. Thank you so much for uh, having a good time, loving us, having fun. And then good old Coos Bay. Did the Coos Bay. I already did my episode about Coos Bay, Oregon. And I talked wonderful stuff about it. But I didn't talk about how the show went. Did I? Did I tell you about the show? Because I remember in the last episode I talked about uh, what's it like to live in Coos Bay. And uh, let's just say, well, let's just say it's uh, it's good just to uh, visit there. <laughs> no offense, Coos Bay. You get it too. You don't want to live there too. <laughs> Coos Bay does not want to live in Coos Bay. And I sh- I saw it um, because the shows, Coos Bay, what in the hell is wrong with you? And I'm going to say the truth because me and my feature act, Mr. Uh, Jason Allen King, who came all the way from North Carolina, flew all the way over here, drove half the way, Made this huge trip, and you guys just disrespected him. Just <clears throat> is that like no one really laughed? I'm cracking up in the back because his jokes are smart, eloquent, and very funny. And I know there's no such thing as a bad crowd, but this crowd was weird. This crowd was like, huh? Bad, bad day, what? And I felt bad. And you know what Jason was doing? His gr- you know what? This was great about Jason. He was doing such a great job being nice because it was his first time working over here. And he wanted to do a good job. And he wanted to make it a good impression. So even if though they weren't laughing for some god reason, he was keeping his composure. And he kept saying, you guys are a good crowd. And he didn't show anything. They just were very disrespectful to smart comedy. God forbid you don't laugh at smart comedy. Wow. Couldn't even give this guy a chance. So then I came up there and I punished him. I started making fun of everybody. I started, this one lady, I was like, hey everybody, welcome to, welcome to Bay. Uh, it's North Bend, Michael. It's North Bend. And she was with this guy that looked like a serial killer. Like he had the Columbine haircut. I even said that. I even said he had a Columbine haircut. Because he looked just like a serial killer. I could see the chloroform in his pocket. I could see it. He's like, I'm going to eat your body today. That's what the type of people <laughs> were in Coos Bay. For some reason, it was just weird. It was just really weird. Then there's this table, okay, to my right. There's this table to my right. There was three people, okay. Two people were pissed off. They were not having it. Anything I said, I don't know if it was my attitude or what, I looked at the tape, I looked at my videos, I don't know what it was, but some reason, they were not liking it. They didn't want me around. I don't know what it was, but the guy in the middle was crying. He was laughing. He was having a great time. I was like, sir, do you need to leave? You can go to this table where people are kind of having a good time versus here. He's like, no, no, no. Like, he was holding it in. Why hold it in? Why? And all those people that didn't laugh and all those people that were in a pissy attitude, why come to a comedy show? Now, I bet you're looking back, Coos Bay, and saying, oh, damn. Now, since the whole world is shut down, I should have went to that comedy show. I should have had a good time. Yeah, you should have, you idiots. The ones that didn't laugh, not everybody in Coos Bay. Trust me. There's some great people in Coos Bay, and I'm so glad that each and every one of you came out. We hung out. We had a good time. I thank each and every one of you that came out. But the ones that didn't laugh, and then the sound guy kept messing with my my uh, my, my microphone. I had to repeat that. My 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 microphone. He kept he he kept adding the echo. He kept adding an echo to my microphone. 
Every time I did a sound effect, he added an echo and it was throwing me off of my... And I said it right in the middle of the show. What are you doing? Why are you adding sound effects? I can handle the sound effects on my own. What are you doing? Stop it. You're not helping. Like, when I used to do stand-up comedy, <laughs> there's a timing, there's a rhythm, there's a, there's a, 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 a beat, there's, there's, there's a flow to it. And then he just kept messing up my flow with this extra echo for no reason. Every time I did any, any, any sound effect I did, whatever it was, whatever it was like, hey, guys, whatever, that, whatever, let's just say that was, he added echo. Every time. And I looked at him like, stop it. And this guy was a dick. Okay? This guy, I'm not going to say his name because I don't like him. And when I don't like someone, I don't like to mention their names because the best thing you can do to someone is not talk about them. But I have to talk about them right now because I need the material for this podcast because I'm no longer doing stand-up comedy ever again. <laughs> We all got fired. We all got fired because the coronavirus was is not a happy person. The coronavirus is like, no, I don't like to laugh. I'm canceling all comedy shows. Sounds like Nick Nolte. I'm canceling all comedy shows. Yeah. Anyways, he was a dick. And the worst thing was he acted like he was in charge. That's what was that's was the problem. He acted like he was in charge. He acted like he was in charge of the whole comedy show. He kept calling my comics, and this my, and this one girl came up to him. Oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, you can sit in the front row. It's good to see you. <laughs> trying to hit on her, trying to be like this slime ball, trying to hit on her for no apparent reason. Just you know, trying to take advantage of, you know, the power of whatever powers he has. He's trying to be the hot shot in the small town. Yeah, I operate the sound and the lights, and I'll tell you where to seat. You want to hook up after this? Meet up after the show? And I don't know why he brought that lady in the front room. Because she just kept running her mouth the whole time. And, you know, I never thought this would be my last time doing stand-up comedy. I should have went into it more. I should have just... Uh, I did unleash, but not like... I don't know. I don't know. That's Coos Bay. That's Coos Bay for you, you know? That is Coos Bay. There's nothing I can say. Except for I went to Medford the next day. Chadwick's. Actually, no. I did a stop in Grants Pass. Grants Pass, Oregon. And uh, thank you guys for having me for that brief moment in time. <laughs> I didn't think this was going to be a last time doing stand-up comedy together, but thank you, Grants Pass. I really appreciate you. You were night and day. We had a wonderful time. We laughed. We we had a great time. I, I was the host. It was my day off, and they said, hey, you want to come over and do stand-up? You want to do a set? And I said, sure. And they said, hey, you want to do be a host instead? Because the guy that was working there doesn't know how to host. He wore sandals, and he looked like David Duchovny, and doesn't know how to be funny, which I get. It takes a while to be funny, you know. I'm not saying it's not easy to be funny, but he he said, uh, "What do you say?" He's like, "All right." <laughs> it was David Duchovny. All right, guys, are you guys ready for your first comic, Scully? Here we go. <laughs> your first comedian came all the way from uh, where'd you come from? Uh, I don't know, but Mike. Oh, shoot, I forgot his name. Mike. Mike, Mike. He's got a podcast called... He's got a podcast called Me, Mike, and I. Uh, give it up for Mike. Here, he's your he's your host. Yeah. That was my intro. That was the introduction to who I was as a comedian. <laughs> give it up. He's got a podcast called Me, Mike, and... Folks, if you ever do live stand-up comedy again, if you ever are a host again, if you ever get up on the microphone in front of a crowd again. Okay, this is what you need to do. This is the blessing in disguise for the from the coronavirus. 
if you ever do any live performances, whether you're introducing someone or introducing the comic to the comedy show, this is your moment to realize that even you are an important deal to the show. And what you need to do is do the following. You don't mumble the words. You don't worry. I know it's terrifying. I know it's scary being up on stage. I get it. I'm with you on that. But know the person's name. And be happy. People can feel if you're not happy. They can feel it. And when you guys go, and when people go up and go, Hey, guys, I'm ready to introduce the comic. Are you guys ready for the show? It's time to make something. At least know the name of the comedian that came to your show for the very first time. At least know that. At least. At least that. Can you give me that? Can you at least look and say, what is your name? Ooh, okay. At least have a card in front of you. At least that. Hold the card and have it say comedian Mike Benton or whoever's coming up. Have it. I, I, I don't know. I've been doing comedy for 15 years and I have no idea why people that host the show or people that bring up the comic just do it so sloppy. All right, guys, you guys ready for the comedy show? It's time for your next comic. You guys ready here? Blah, 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 blah. As soon as you get on the microphone, it's professionalism. Sure, we may not ever see a microphone ever again, but at that time, it should be clear and concise, right? I think so. All right. Am I bitching about it too much? Okay. All right. Well, well after Grants Pass, I went to um, Medford, Oregon for that Friday and Saturday, and uh, we had a great time. Great crowds. Even though with this whole pandemic uh, of the coronavirus, people still came out. They, I know we were supposed to be quarantined, and I know all that, but you know what? What a good way to go right before the world just shuts down is have some laughter, have a good time, and have fun because that's what we did. We had a good time. We had fun. We had some laughs. It was fun. It was magnificent, and I'm very thankful that Medford... Oregon sealed the deal and said, yeah, let's have some fun. And it's important. It's important to have fun. Although I met some very interesting people that came up to me after the show. And they said, oh, man, you were funny as shit, man. Especially when you were making fun of that coronavirus. Even though the coronavirus was developed by the Democrats. For the whole election. This is a whole ploy for the election. Swear to God, that's exactly what I heard all weekend long. Man, I don't care if there's FEMA out there. I don't care if everything's shutting down. It's all a ploy for the election. That's all it is. It's all to make people not have fun so we can vote for the wrong person. It's the Democrats that came up with the coronavirus. Is it mean to tell me Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden created the coronavirus, sent it to China, and came back to America? Is that how it works? Because you said Democrats. They said Democrats. If you're if you're gonna do you should it should hit the U.S. first. And then go to the rest of the world. It shouldn't go to China first and then come to the U.S. If you're going to ploy and do that whole Democrats created the virus for a reason for the election, uh, you should start it in Milwaukee first. Why Milwaukee? Why not Milwaukee? Why not? Everyone always forgets Milwaukee. Don't forget Milwaukee in this podcast. Don't forget it. <laughs> but, that's, but that's all I heard the whole time. The Democrats did it. The Democrats, they created... Who cares? Who cares? Even if they did, they did a lot of work. That's That takes a lot of work for a Democrat 
to create the virus, send it all the way to China, let the Chinese government know, hey, just want to let you know, I'm creating this virus because there's an election in America and we need to create a fear. So do you mind if we just drop the virus in here, let it spread? And then you can bring it back to the U.S. when you're done. Whenever you feel like it's it's time to spread, you I'll give you free range to spread the virus. How does that sound? And the Chinese, I bet the Chinese government looked at each other. Is he a sidious? <laughs> Could you imagine Bernie Sanders taking a, this random trip? Look, I'm down by a couple percent. No one wants free health care. No one wants it. I believe if I create the coronavirus, I'll send it to China. I'll send it to you first. You will be the first to to initiate the coronavirus, however you want it to be. Now, 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 think about this. Think about this. Joe Biden and the Republicans, they're fighting, and they, 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 they're backed up by all the super PACs. I am here to you in Wuhan to create this pandemic scare so everyone can be a communist, socialist, sorry, same thing. Everyone can, 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 and you, the Chinese government, you can kill off how many people you want to, cont- and then you can contain it, whatever you want. I don't care. The deal is, I create the virus, I send it to you, and then you can send it back. And then by the time it comes back to me, it'll be uh, around March, almost April. And November will be here before you know it. And then people will vote for me because I'm tired of losing. I, Bernie Sanders, is tired of losing. We need free health care. We need this coronavirus to spread so people can vote for me. I'm doing all this so people can vote for me. (laughs) <laughs> Are people that stupid? Are people that stupid to believe? Oh, the Democrats create. All right, you know, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with that topic. I'm done. The reason why I'm done with that topic is I'm done with that topic. That's why I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. There's more things to worry about. Like school is out forever. School. <laughs> Out of nowhere. And school's going to be out for a couple days. Now school's out forever. Holy crap. What in the actual, what in the actual, actual is going on that school's out forever? I'm not worried about the children. Okay? I really am not worried about the children because education is going to come back. Kids are going to get, kids are going to bounce back. Kids are resilient. I feel bad for those parents out there. And you're quarantined with them forever. I get it. I oh my god. When we get cured from this coronavirus, oh my god, parents are going to go crazy. They're gonna go outside. Do you think the divorce rate's gonna go up? I think so. I think the divorce rate's gonna go up. Everyone's gonna have sex with everybody. It's gonna happen. Everyone's gonna have sex with everyone. Once we ate. <laughs> If you are cooped up with your children and you can't go anywhere, you can't entertain, you can't watch, you can only watch so much stuff, you can't go out in public, you can't do any of that, and then you're stuck, and then all of a sudden the coronavirus is lifted, and all of a sudden you can go out, you're going to go bad shit crazy. People are going to get drunk. People are going to get stoned. People are going to, it's going to be the pan, the AIDS pandemic is going to make a comeback. Oh, yeah. You know how, like, retro stuff always comes back? Oh, AIDS virus is definitely making a huge spike. Big time. Huge. What do we do, parents? What are we going to do with our children? Are we going to educate them? No. We're not good educators. That's why we send them to school. Okay? I don't know what we could do. I guess we can just say, uh, go do your stuff online. But, you know, if you don't have smart kids and they're struggling, you're, you're, we're stuck with them. And we're not bright. Let's be honest. Let's be honest right now. Our kids are way smarter than us. Because their brains are being functioned on a daily basis. And their education level is way more it has progressed more than what we did as a, as a child. 
Our kids are the rulers of the world and they're stuck with us. Quarantine. <laughs> Quarantine. But don't worry. Okay? The one that's the one thing you don't want to do is is freak out and then yell at your kids while you're quarantined with them. Okay? Figure stuff out. Come out with some certain games. Come out with some play date. Ah, don't you can't even do a play date. You can't even do I tell you what, you make them clean like they never cleaned before. If they act up, they don't even give them a chance. That's what I'll say. Don't even give them a chance. Okay? As soon as they give you a lip, you say, clean this whole house. Sterilize it. Make it coronavirus free. You're quarantined. You're stuck. <laughs> hey, by the way, guys, how's North Korea doing with this coronavirus? Just ask him for a friend. If you want to know how North Korea is doing, or if you have any idea how North Korea is doing, make sure you email me at mmipodcast19 at gmail.com because maybe they're the ones that are involved with this whole coronavirus scare. I mean, of course it is. No, everyone, and it's so funny. Everyone goes, oh, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, and blah, 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 blah. But let's be real. It was planted. People dropped the ball. Now the economy's falling apart because of. The election. All right. I'm trying to stay. God damn. I'm trying to stay positive during these shitty times. I am trying my best. I am trying my best. All my gigs got canceled, but I'm not complaining about that. But I'm trying my best. I'm trying. Trying. Good Lord, I'm trying. Just stay positive, man. Just look in within and pray to God. And make sure he helps you out. I'm trying, Lord. Oh, my God. I am trying, dear Father in heaven, I'm trying my best to make sure that that I'm trying to stay positive. And we've only been quarantined for, what, a week? Not even that, three days? <laughs> but, every time, but every time you turn on the TV, it's the exact same thing. We're all in this together, world. We are all in this together. That's the name of the podcast title. We are all in this together. I bet you turn on the TV. What's it? Shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down. Everything shut down, shut down. Essential working. Shut down, 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 shut down. And shut down. Maybe we should just start reading books. Nah, I mean, I'll read books, okay? I'm not, okay, 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 okay. Imagine living in a third world country. And all of a sudden this coronavirus came out. And what, are, what are the people in the third world countries going to say? So? So? <laughs> that, that's exactly what people in third world country will say about this whole coronavirus pandemic. So? The U.S. bombed my country. I don't have a house anymore. The Saudi Arabian government already uh, let go of this chemical warfare. My mom's head got chopped off by the Taliban. I don't even know what a spoon looks like for the past 20 years. And you're complaining about the coronavirus because you can't watch TV or you can't go to a show? What is a show? Can you explain that to me? A show. A comedy show. It's weird. People come together and laugh. <laughs> What's laughter? Can you explain that to me? You spoiled American that's crying over the coronavirus. Can you explain to me what laughter is? Can you tell me that? Well, I'm a, I'm a comedian. What's a comedian? Well, it's my job. What's a job? What's a career? What's a job? What's a podcast? Can you explain all of this to me? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm trying to survive because I don't want to die from typhoid or malaria. What's vaccines? What's a shoe? What's a pen? What's a microphone? 
What's a screen? What's do you understand, Mike? Do you understand? This is third world Mike talking to first world Mike. Quit complaining. Yes, we we are you're down and but now we're all the same. We are all we are all on that same level, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but think about this, ladies and gentlemen. This is probably the best thing for us. This coronavirus, it's going to get all the toxins out of all of us, and we're going to try to survive and try to be together. Okay, that is our that is our thing right now. And before you know, what? I'm still I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. You know why? I think it's time, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for good news. That's right, I am sick and tired of seeing stuff on the news about mass shootings, uh, burglaries, robberies, killings, diseases, fathom, stock market crashing, all that stuff. I'm sick and tired of seeing all the bad news all over the world, especially with this coronavirus. I'm sick and tired of people complaining about stuff shutting down. I'm sick and tired of seeing stuff on Facebook that people are getting angry and having politic fights. Enough of that. It's time for some good news. And the good news for today is world's second person cured of HIV. And I just clicked out of it. Let me go back. What in the heck? Let me try that again. Nope. Go back. Am I going to cut this out? Am I going to cut this out? Should I cut? Did I just lose it? Did I just lose it? I just lost it. Um... Well, that's embarrassing. I just lost the article, and now it's not coming back. Hey, here's the good news. Fine, I'll just switch it. Hey, here's the good news. No one was drinking and driving yesterday on St. Patty's Day. Huh? That's some good news for you. No one was drinking and driving, and no one got ran over by a drunk Irish person last night on St. Patty's Day. That's something. That's a, I know it's small and it's minute, and I know I just, I don't know how I, I swear to God, maybe the government's listening right now. I just clicked on it and now it disappeared. But whatever. It's, it basically said the second person was cured and they haven't, they haven't had AIDS in uh, th- uh, th- 30 months. But now I can't find it. I just clicked on it and now it's completely gone. But it's okay. But, so let's just move on. No one was killed yesterday by drunk driving. So that's some good news. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a big win for St. Patty's Day. Do you know how many drunk Irish people would have, would have been murdered yesterday by driving? Maybe the coronavirus is like, no, not today. Maybe the coronavirus is the designated driver for <laughs> for uh, St. Patty's Day yesterday. So that's good news, even though I lost this article about this. But the good news is no one was drinking driving yesterday. So thank you. And those were your good news. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm going to get going. But uh, I just want to let you know, thank you so much for listening to me, myself, and I podcast. I really appreciate it. You guys mean a lot. And I'm going to keep pumping out this content. I don't know how I'm going to make stuff up when we all have the same news, when all the news is the same, but we're, I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure out stuff. I'm going to create stuff for you. And, you know, we're going to keep listening to this. We're going to keep having a good time, okay? So keep having a good time. Keep listening to me. I don't have any gigs lined up. All my gigs that got canceled, so it's I am me, out of a job. But that's okay. Uh, still, me, subscribe to my podcast. Still subscribe. Still be a part of this. I want you it's to be a part me, of this. It's me, Mike Sofinda. Listen to my journey of mine. Reinventing myself. And I gotta figure out something quick. But it's okay. I have you with me by my side listening. So, thank you so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe. And even with these down times of trouble, make sure you you salsa. Here we go. Salsa, 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 salsa. Hey.